A recent leak has indicated that AMD's next-gen Ryzen 7000 CPUs may have some serious clock speed gains over the previous gen, and one of their partners may have accidentally confirmed their release date. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Recently, I made a video discussing some leaks and rumors which came out last month suggesting AMD would be announcing the Ryzen 7000 series earlier this month. As many thought that the wording from the partners event was implying that they would be unveiled before the event. However, I said this just means that they were probably referring to the announcement at Computex 2022. What I did say though was that if motherboard manufacturers are already showing off their motherboards, then the CPUs can't be too far off for release, and it looks like that is actually the case. It would have been strange for AMD's partners to announce and show off these new motherboards, only to have the CPUs be unveiled like 2 or 3 months later. That's a solid way to kill hype. Fortunately, that's not going to be the case. We should see the CPUs get announced later this month, with them hitting store shelves in the middle of September. MSI has recently posted a short video which was just a promotional content vid for their upcoming X670 motherboards, and we can see that in this video it states launching on September 15th, 2022. It's been rumored that both the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and next gen motherboards will be released on the same day, so it's very plausible as that would make the most sense. Well, it seems like we'll be seeing AMD launch next gen CPUs before Intel, and like I said before, one of the biggest reasons could be that they just want a few months for the 7000 series to have all the spotlight to itself. I'm hoping that availability will be better than last time. As you all probably remember, the 5000 series were released right in the middle of the whole health crisis. I mean, it could still be argued we're still in it, but things aren't nearly as bad as they were back then. But moving on, and I wanted to talk about a recent article that was posted on WCCF Tech's website a couple days ago, where they claim their sources have given them some info on the finalized specs for the upcoming Ryzen 7000 series. AMD themselves have basically confirmed which SKUs would be launching on a leak from their own website, but we never got any info in regards to specs such as clock speeds. But now it looks like we have a bit more info. They have gone through each SKU in detail, but what I wanted to focus on was this table here as it summarizes things nicely. Link for the full article will be in the video description, so if you were interested in reading the whole thing, you guys can go ahead and do that. So the first SKU is the Ryzen 9 7950X, which will be a 16 core, 32 thread processor. This CPU will have a base clock of 4.5 GHz and a boost clock of 5.7 GHz, so there are some really hefty games over the previous generation. The 5950X had a base clock of just 3.4 GHz and a boost of up to 4.9 GHz, so we're looking at 1100 MHz for the base and 800 MHz for the boost. I know these figures might sound a bit aggressive, but I don't think they're too far-fetched, and this can very well be the case. Remember, AMD had already showcased a couple of gaming demos with Zen 4. The first one was with Halo Infinite, and Lisa Zhu herself mentioned that the CPU was running at 5GHz all core, although she never specified how many cores. However, at Computex 2022, they showed another gaming demo of Zen 4 in Ghostwire Tokyo running at 5.5GHz, which Robert Halleck later confirmed on PC World Stream that it was a 16-core part, which was a prototype, and most threads were hovering at around 52 to 55 gigahertz which sounds really exciting if you were to ask me. That's why these figures that you're seeing in this table do seem believable to me. The boost clock alone is about 16% higher than the previous gen part, and AMD themselves have stated that Zen 4 will provide an IPC increase of around 8-10%, to so easily we could be looking at about 15-25% to better performance across the board. Although the caveat to this is that the increase in power seems very very substantial. It seems like they will be considerably raising TDP for the higher end parts by 65 watts, and remember TDP doesn't indicate power draw, those figures will be north of 230 watts with this kind of configuration. I'm going to go off track a bit here, but Basically, it seems like whether it's CPUs or GPUs, all the manufacturers have said, you know what, efficiency can take a backseat, let's just push the silicon as hard as we can go to meet these next-gen performance improvement targets. For those of you planning on building a high-end system using next-gen parts, I hope you've got a 1000 watt power supply handy, as I can foresee that being the baseline recommendation for a lot of these high-end enthusiast caliber builds for next-gen. While this doesn't necessarily affect me too much, as electricity isn't too expensive where I live, I can see a lot of people getting turned off by this or being forced to undervolt their parts to decrease 
as much power consumption as they can. Like, as much as I want substantial performance improvements for next-gen parts, if it means we're all going to be turning our rigs into centralized furnaces, then I think something else needs to be done. Anyways, moving on to the rest of the specs, we can see that the rest of the SKUs will all have the same sort of clock speed improvements. You know, it's great that they're finally going to be releasing a CPU generation that is going to be reliably operating at frequencies beyond 5 GHz. I'd say it's about time, since Intel has had many countless CPUs with the capability of running these kinds of frequencies. And with the looming threat of Raptor Lake, I'd say they will need to squeeze out all the performance they can get from these parts. Now, one final piece of info I wanted to touch upon was the last couple of paragraphs in their article. They state, according to the same sources, the AMD Ryzen 7 desktop CPUs based on Zen 4 will only allow users to undervolt the chip itself, similar to what they had set up for the 5800X3D, where there was no overclocking allowed for that chip, but users could alter power limits or play around with voltages. But there was no curve optimizer or PBO2 available. Which, while we're on that subject, I haven't actually heard anything about a PBO3 or F XFR3 coming with these 7000 series CPUs, so it could be likely that this is the case. If you were to ask me, I personally don't care too much about this. I mean, take a look at these clock speed figures. They've clearly already clocked the CPU's balls to the wall, and that makes sense that there's not a whole lot of headroom left. I mean, this has been the case for the past couple of generations, so it's not really unexpected to see that the next gen would probably have a lot of headroom left for overclocking. I remember I spent a whole Saturday of mine fine-tuning my 5900X, and in terms of real-world gains, the performance improvements were negligible, so I felt pretty bad about that. You're far better off just power limiting or undervolting these chips to get basically the same performance at stock, but considerably lower power drop. And trust me, you'll get better temps and lower noise as, as a result of that. On the other hand, I can see a lot of disappointment being expressed from enthusiasts. If you guys had tuned in or had seen the recent publications surrounding the next-gen boards, they look pretty hefty with some extremely beefy VRM configurations. And it seems like a somewhat of a waste now if you can't really do any overclocking yourself or utilize that motherboard's full potential. What I bet will happen is that motherboard manufacturers may not adhere to this and will start implementing their own overclocking options. MSI recently did this for their own boards that allowed users to tune the 5800X 3D like how you would with PBO2 and Curve Optimizer. I believe this feature was called Combo Strike. Although Gamers Nexus had showed that in regards to real world performance, it barely impacted anything. So take that for what you will. I am curious though, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these specs. Are you going to buy a Zenforge CPU? And would you be disappointed if you can't overclock it? If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.